Hello everybody and welcome to the next to the last lesson in this course about reading skew T's. This uh, lesson is going to center on a couple of additional indices that we have not yet touched on. Uh, you know, the previous lessons we've touched on how the charts laid out. We've touched on things like LCL, LFC, equilibrium level. We've touched on instability. We've touched on wind shear. Today we're going to look at some composite indices and really just kind of a uh, explain how they're calculated uh, using the visual of a skew t but in general uh, you don't usually use a skew t to calculate these I mean from a just lay person standpoint that's not really what you're doing with it your main reason for uh, using these indices because they're already calculated and they're just easy to figure out so we're going to use the May 16th sounding the 18 Z one this time once again and we're going to look at these right here we're, we're not going to look at left supercell and we're not going to look at sig hell in this but we are going to look at the supercell the sig tor parameters both effective and uh, fixed we're going to explain the difference and show it up here so anyways let's take a look first off at the supercell composite what is the supercell composite you might ask well this parameter the supercell composite is designed to detect environments where right moving cyclonic supercells are most possible uh, you know this is uh, used to detect those environments where supercells are just most likely to be seen uh, the higher value the more ch higher chance of a supercell sort of thing uh, the ingredients for this uh, composite parameter include effective storm relative helicity the most unstable cape and the effective bulk wind difference uh, this parameter is designed to show where these three ingredients overlap the most with one another in an environment you know the higher values of supercell composite the more you have uh, potential for uh, supercells just because of this uh, parameter. Uh, not always is this the case. Sometimes you'll have high supercell composite parameter, but in reality, the setup favors a line of storms, etc. So it's used as a tool. You know, if you're going to get discrete storms and you have a high supercell composite parameter, the odds are pretty high you're going to have supercells. Uh, same thing with significant tour. The significant tornado parameter or sig tor same kind of thing you need supercells before you can get sig tors at least uh in this regard you almost universally you need supercells or just some kind of way to get low level mesocyclones if you're not going to get that you can have all the sig tor in the world it doesn't matter because you will not have significant tornadoes uh fixed layer sig tor is uh it's a composite index which takes into account the zero to six kilometer bulk wind difference, the 0 to 1 kilometer storm relative helicity, surface base cape, and the surface LCL. So basically, the fixed layer takes into account a lot of this right here and also goes exactly 6 kilometers up. So it's very much uh, a universal kind of standard in the sense of this is where you're, uh, this is what we're calculating. The fixed layer, it does have its uses. I personally prefer the effective layer sig tor which we're about to talk about but fixed layer does have its uses uh, it really takes into account the surface based environment so it's it's you know there's uses there the effective layer sig tor it is similar to the fixed layer in the sense of that it takes into account a bunch of uh, parameters for tornadoes but uh, it takes into a different uh, account different ingredients which uh, these don't focus so heavily on the surface parcels we just talked about you know it doesn't take into account what happens if this parcel right here is lifted up in the atmosphere uh, it takes into account more the mixed layer the you know this whole thing what what is the storm ingesting from the surface to the cloud layer it takes into account the effect of storm relative helicity the bulk wind difference uh, the convective inhibition in the lower levels that's important and also the the mean layer parcel LCL, the ML LCL, and not the surface LCL. So it takes into account all those. I personally think it's a better view of the uh, environment and its conduciveness to SIG tours given storms that can produce significant tornadoes. Can't say that enough. Anytime you see uh, parameters like that, uh, like these down here, and they're high end, you got to have supercells first. You know, you got to have uh, isolated storms to get supercells or at least semi-isolated to get powerful supercells. Then you need supercells to really see SIGTOR uh, enhanced or they, they, it fully realized. So, you know, they're tools. They're not to be gone off of. Just those values being high doesn't mean anything on their own. You have to have other evidence to support that potential being realized. Okay, the other thing I want to talk about in this lesson are lapse rates. Now, on a visual level, lapse rates are simply put the change in temperature with height in the atmosphere. 
Uh, if you see the temperature falling uh, with height, that is your lapse rates. You know, you can take it from, say, the 850 layer to the 500 layer. You know, there's not much of a change in that. There's a big change from here just above 850 to the 500 layer. But at 850, it's actually not that big of a change. And you see this played out down here. You know, you see these numbers 7.1. Uh, Celsius per kilometer, uh, 6.1, etc. Lapse rates are sim are very important uh, for determining potential for instability during during the day, as well as the potential for large hail associated with powerful updrafts. Without strong lapse rates, an environment isn't terribly unstable. Well, what do these numbers mean? What where you know what is the number that you're looking for? Well, first off, on the lower end, anything below six represents pretty stable conditions. Anything near 9.5, uh, which is dry adiabatic, we've talked about this, it's considered absolutely unstable. In between those is conditionally unstable air, which means with enough moisture and lift, the atmosphere can be unstable. So anyways, that's, you know, that's, that's the very last bit of uh, indices we want to talk about here. The next lesson, we're going to put all this together, look at some skew T's, and assess some environments. Uh, basically, the hands-on, let's put this into practice lesson. So that's what many of you have been waiting for, so we're going to do that. So we will see you in the next lesson.